Good morning, church. Here we are in 1 Samuel chapter 1, 2, and 3, and uh, we're getting into some action here now, and uh, I just love it. Let's just jump right in here. So I want to say this uh, in chapter 1, and I just am so thankful that this example is in the Bible. In chapter 1, kind of from verses 9, 9 to about 18, we have this beautiful example of how Hannah, after being falsely accused by a church leader at that time, responds with humility and graciousness and forgiveness and does not respond with offense and anger. And I just love it. Because what is happening here, unfortunately today, happens regularly. Uh, I, I hate to break it to you, Pansy Chapel, but your church leaders are not perfect. I'm sorry. We're not. We're in need of God's grace like everyone else's. And though we try to follow God's ways as best we can, the reality is we're broken. And we need God's forgiveness and grace as well. And that means that at times... Even though we want so desperately to lead the church of the Lord well under his leadership and his guidance, we're going to mess up. And so here's the deal. Eli has falsely accused Hannah. And yet what does she do? She responds with grace. She allows Eli to bless her. And she walks away with peace and joy and hope in her heart because she has met with the Lord. Church, I want to encourage you, uh, even when your leaders disappoint you, focus on God's leadership. He leads perfectly. And, uh, and just focus on how he's leading you in your life. And uh, yeah, awesome. Chapter 2. I love this prayer that Hannah gives. And I, uh, I want to encourage you to park there for a bit. But I want to jump towards the end in verse 29. So I want to highlight something about parenting here. So in, in chapter 2, verse 29, we can see that the accusation made against Eli was that he honored his sons more than God. And if you're going to read this, you're, you might ask yourself, hang on a minute. I thought Eli rebuked his sons quite harshly. He did. If you look back in chapter 2, uh, two verses kind of 23 to 25, 25, Eli pretty harshly rebukes his sons there. And he tells them, guys, what you're doing here is not right. And yet, what does this? what's the basis for this accusation then that Eli did nothing to restrain them? If you look ahead in chapter 3, verse 13, you can see that God is telling Samuel, Eli did nothing to restrain his sons. Church, I want to say this gently and lovingly, but as parents, there comes a time when reasoning and talking with your young children is not appropriate and you need to take action to discipline them. There are times when children need a firm hand so that their behavior will alter to line up with God's character and what he commands in the scriptures. And, and I ask the question, why is that important? That is important because I'll ask this question. Is God a God who only ever speaks and reasons with us? The answer is no. There are times where God, although he often starts the discipline process that way in hopes that we will repent, there are times when God realizes we need a bit of correction in a bit of a stiffer way and he will bring it. And if as parents, we are only ever speaking to our children, we are not setting them up, to be able to then later know how God disciplines his children. And so then they will go into adulthood thinking as soon as God may discipline them and correct them, hang on a minute, this isn't what correction is supposed to look like. And they actually could fall into dis disillusionment or offense. Church, let's seek the Lord on this and ask the Lord this question. Father, is there anything about the way I discipline my children that you would like to speak to me about today? Seek the Lord for wisdom. James 1 is a verse we talk, a chapter we talk about often here on these videos. And it's so important that we seek God for wisdom in this. We want to discipline lovingly, but we also want to follow how God's character disciplines. And he at times will use more than just words. All right. And then chapter 3, I want to look at something from the first three verses. We can see here that Samuel's ministering. And it says, in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. Uh, there were not many visions and Eli's eyes were becoming weak. So again, I want to go back to Genesis chapter 27 and 28. We saw that Isaac's eyesight was described as weak because he was deliberately going against what the Lord's will for him was regarding his sons. And in the same way, we can see here that Eli's eyes are growing weak because he is not following the leadership the way that God would want him to follow. That's not a reference to say if you need glasses, you've got to go and uh, whatever. You're not following the Lord, right? No, no. I just want us to make be understand here when the Bible talks about it, we got we got to caution ourselves to dismiss it too quickly, all right? And this is highlighted again here in chapter in, in chapter three, verse three. It says the lamp of God had not yet gone out. 
Church, that lamp was commanded by God in Exodus chapter 27. He said to Aaron and his sons, that lamp is never to go out from evening till morning. You trim that thing and you keep it going. Why? Because the lamp and the oil burning in the lamp represents the Holy Spirit's presence. And the reason why Eli's eyesight is getting weak here is because the lamp of God, which represents the presence of the Holy Spirit among the people, is going out. And so what what would we expect to happen except that his vision is starting to wane because he is not relying on what represents the Holy Spirit. Church, we are the same way. If we are going to start uh, not following with zeal and intentionality to seek the Holy Spirit, our eyesight, our ability to see God's direction in our lives, to hear his voice and then follow is also going to become very difficult. And so I want to ask this question in closing, Lord, do I hear your voice clearly? Is there something you want to speak to me about where I am not inviting your presence to lead me? Church, spend some time with the Lord there today and have a blessed day hearing his voice and seeking his presence. 